I am sure you have heard by now about the new Adobe Commerce products that were announced at Summit a couple of months ago, Adobe Commerce Optimizer and Adobe Commerce as a Service. While in some ways they are similar to the original Adobe Commerce offering, they are different in many ways. And so in this video, I'm going to walk you through a demo of the new Adobe Commerce environment. If you're familiar with Adobe Commerce as it is, I'm gonna show you what's different, what's new. There's a lot of new on this side, but if you've never been introduced to Magento 2 or anything like that, I think you're going to be thrilled with the suite of products and the capabilities that come with Adobe Commerce Optimizer. So if you're ready, let's jump in. Adobe Commerce Optimizer is basically a headless front end solution, but it's not just front end. It actually has some back end material as well. So included in Adobe Commerce Optimizer as a really brief overview is edge delivery services, which is a really fast, high performing content management system that actually is already being integrated into Adobe Experience Manager. If you want to go that route, this is a great stepping stone. If you don't want to go this that route, you have everything that you need right out of the box. Now, in addition to edge delivery services, there is this new catalog data model. They call it a CCDM for short. And basically this is a solution to get your products directly from your ERP and then render those on the front end in edge delivery services, but do it really fast, very scalable, be able to support like million, many millions of products tremendous number of price variations on there as well, and then serve it again to your customers. The cool thing with Optimizer is, well, yes, we often think of it being geared to be utilized with Magento 2 Adobe Commerce or even their Adobe Commerce as a service, which is bundled with that product. It is actually useful for Salesforce Commerce Cloud, or I, I mean, I technically you could use it for Shopify. It's kind of an overkill there. Uh, SAP, any, any basically legacy e-commerce platform that is API enabled, even homegrown solutions, it works. And I think that's a pretty novel approach. You don't have to rebuild your entire system. Top of funnel pages get improved with this edge delivery services, but everything else remains the same. Here is the original out of the box. It's more or less a boilerplate, it's a template, but it's not bad looking and it has all the foundational elements to a really successful e-commerce website right here. This is their demo. So the home page is actually built via blocks. Actually, most pages are built with these blocks. I actually have a video, which I will link to right here about how edge delivery services work, the content management of it. It's really amazing overall. So this is a good option uh, just to be able to make anybody in your organization, allow them to make changes on the website. Uh, but you'll see here at the top, we have some fitment information. We have a brand model for a, a hypothetical uh, car manufacturer. And we can search here, or I like selling car parts. We can search in here for tires and up comes our results very quickly. And here comes the product page. You'll, you'll notice how fast that was loading up. Again, this is boilerplate. It's, a, it's more of a template and there's a lot of room to grow. This is open source. So this front end can be customized to literally anything that you ever would want. Optimizers encloses the capabilities, of course, for search on your website, recommended products, and it's not just search or recommended products, like it's really smart stuff that understands user behavior and tailors the results based off of what it anticipates is going to resonate the best with visitors. All of this is customizable on the page, whether from a developer or directly from your catalog data. Now, the front end is pretty simple, pretty basic. And this is again, going to be rapidly improved over the next while, but to be honest, it's transactable, it's working as it is right now. And so I think it's a really interesting product. Again, top of funnel pages, the product page, the category page, the home page, and the searches and content pages, all of those Adobe Commerce Optimizer takes over and leaves the cart, the checkout, and the customer experience all to the existing system that you have. So there's some integration work that has to happen, but out of the box, that's what it does. It's fast and it works. Now, this isn't the only piece of Adobe Commerce Optimizer. You would call that edge delivery services using Adobe nomenclature here. Uh, but as an example here, let's log into an Adobe Commerce admin. Okay, in fact, this is actually Adobe Commerce as a service, but on the sidebar, there is this link right here, which we can click and it takes us to the Adobe Commerce Optimizer 
dashboard. So you could be using Salesforce Commerce Cloud and you would actually navigate to this link right here. And as such, you would make your changes and your modifications here. Now, again, remember the products that are in Optimizer or and that are served on the front end right here come from Adobe Commerce's catalog data model or CCDM. That's where they come from. They are not being directly served from your shopping cart system as it is. It actually is pulled from there or ideally from their, your ERP. It's pulled out of there and it's then rendered on the website. So Adobe Commerce Optimizer is kind of like this middleware and it is the front end as well. So it's everything but the actual back end. If you were to go to Adobe Commerce as a service, that includes the commerce back end as well. So it's the full suite. So the optimizer is just middleware and it's the front end visitor experience. Middleware though has controls over it, which allows us to be able to modify that experience and make it better. So we do have this admin panel and I also want to call out that there is on the developer side tooling called App Builder. App Builder is this central place for customization. So you can actually modify the results coming out of this catalog data model. You can make changes to a lot of different things and it's all integrated into the full Adobe suite of products. So this is a starting place, but as you're looking to grow the whole Adobe suite, Adobe Target, the full experience manager, the digital asset manager, all of that comes into play and it becomes a tremendous value add as you are ready to make that step forward. Okay, so here we see on the left sidebar, a product discovery. We see that we have some search terms going in here. That works well. We have our uh, some faceting, so we can control the uh, the drop downs on this left sidebar, making it so that it's easier to filter. We have some synonyms in most every industry. Synonyms are going to be important. They can, they can be one way, they can be two way synonyms. We can add some merchandising to promote or demote products in these search results. And we can have our, we have just a couple of settings here. Product discovery, you do get quite a lot of control over how these products are rendered both on the product list page, as well as the category pages, which there's even conversation about how this is rendered. One of the things I appreciate about this whole product is Adobe has reimagined what e-commerce should look like for the next 10 years. Unfortunately, many other platforms are working with this massive amount of legacy information and iterating is hard. Adobe is leveraging the good parts of their previous successes and they're starting from scratch on other aspects. And so that's where the announcements have been made. I'm actually recording this before overall general availability. So there's going to be changes to what you see here in this video over the next while. And of course, I'll be updating you on our Swift Otter YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe there and you'll be able to stay up to date with some of these amazing changes that are coming down the pike. We have our product discovery, controlling how people see this. We have recommendations, being able to provide some information or some recommendations, pun intended, about how, what people are going to see as they browse the website and what goes with what. Most of this is AI powered. There's not a lot of control that you have over this right now, but this is an area that you will want to know about as they continue to add uh, features here. Now, the most radical change in this whole Adobe Commerce Optimizer is actually found in policies and channels. Now we say, what are policies or channels? This is the information that is stored about your catalog that again comes from ideally your ERP, but it could come from any source. A you have APIs and you just connect them up. Salesforce, Commerce Cloud, SAP, uh, NetSuite, whatever. Like you can pull this information out, the catalog out, and push it up to here. And again, it's ridiculously capable. There's almost no upper limit as far as how many products can be stored. Ridiculously fast, uh, engineered for true enterprise uh, grade situations here. So we have policies and channels. What are policies and what are channels? A policy is basically a filter to de de define what products are shown in a given channel. The example they use is a car dealership or a car manufacturer that is selling to different dealerships. The different dealerships have requirements on what products they actually want to stock or perhaps list on their website. And there's a million different use cases around this. Well, instead of saying, okay, I want this product to be enabled on this website or this product on this website, and then we have some, maybe some pricing issues and availability issues. Instead, uh, we are, these, these are basically filters. So we can filter which product is available where and, and, and control it from a rule-based perspective. And I find this to be a really interesting approach. One that 
in my experience, I have not seen in the e-commerce space thus far. Again, it's basically saying how can we project how people are going to use e-commerce in the next 10 years, and we're going to build around that. Very different than what I have seen in the past. So we have these policies here. And in this case, from a developer's perspective, there is a header piece of text that can be sent along with this request to get products on this given channel. And we can put in a, a, a header name or a string and put a value in there. And actually then we can filter the value based off of this. So we can have it based off of price. We can have it based off of um, any other attribute that we want. And it can actually be based out of, or the value coming out of this Adobe header that was passed with the request requesting products. Uh, so this is really interesting. And then we can combine this with channels. So the channel is pre basically a predefined set of rules. So these different products are going to be sold on this website. So you could set up an attribute and say, okay, this is this, this, this product is to be sold on these five different channels. Uh, that can come from your ERP. It could come from again, your e-commerce platform, set this up. You can also set it up for uh, different locales or languages as well. All of that is possible right here. Now, the question you're probably wondering is what about prices and how does that work? Now, prices come directly from your ERP. At this point, there is no capacity to edit these from your uh, in your in this dashboard. And again, we're thinking about the Adobe's market or target market for these different features. Now, and in this case, their target market is not necessarily companies that are making these changes in the admin panel. These are a little bit bigger companies, companies that all the information comes directly from their ERP, including pricing. Now, the way it works with pricing is it's actually separate from the products. You have products and they have price books. So a price book, and there's a lot of different price books you can have, you can set then the different prices up in the book and they're, they're basically separate entities, but then they're tied together. So it's pretty interesting. And it's something that of it's, it's again, in my experience, it's a novel way to approach this. I'm sure there's other, uh, parallel systems out there, but I find it still fairly novel how they are thinking about these type of problems. So policies and channels related to what products are available for a given channel to or destination to use here. Now, of course, they have some observability around these products coming from the ERP. So we can see the catalog service. We can look at the details or the attributes, the values that are coming from the ERP. That's pretty straightforward. Um, we have our product discovery, uh, some different uh, products as well uh, that we can look here. We can see the, uh, again, stock status, all that stuff is coming from the ERP. And then of course we have uh, our recommendations view. And then we have our, some events, basically again, more observability, more from a developer perspective, how are the, these products interacting with the website? So overall, this is incredibly powerful. Uh, it's a really interesting take, very fresh in my experience. Uh, there's just not a lot out there that I have seen that is, has this take basically build a new system on top of your existing system. You don't have to change out all the business logic and, 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 and the challenges and expense that come with that approach. So if you would like more information, feel free to reach out to me, Joseph at swiftauto.com. I'd be happy to uh, provide some context. In fact, one offer that I always put out there, if you are interested in a demo where we actually load your data into this type of a system. So you can actually browse a front end just like this and see how does it work? What's it like to have my data in there? How does it look? We can do that for you and we'd be happy to do that for you. So send me an email, joseph at swiftauto.com. And we'd love to have a conversation about what it looks like to present a, a sample environment with your data in it.